Hello guys, here's the moment of the truth. If you haven't watched my other video, um, I bricked this thing. This computer chip only has a fraction of what needed to be uploaded to it. Why is there cats meowing? For some dumb reason, I don't know. I just fed them. Anyway, <clears throat> so I bricked the, my lighting controller. This is the LED lighting controller. Has 16 outputs. That doesn't mean 16 strands of wire can be hooked to this. I think it can go about four, four or five hundred uh, per freaking thing. I mean, thousands, thousands, and thousands. I think close to 10,000 lights can be hooked to this one controller. Close to it, with power injection though. So something came in the mail today, and this is that little programmer. I ordered. I don't know if y'all saw the video, but if you didn't, this is, is a little parallax programmer already plugged in the uh, USB uh, to it, and I haven't actually done anything with this yet. So we're gonna see what happens when I plug this in, and you want to make sure the VSS. There is a VSS RES TX, so the VSS goes to the VSS side. On here don't plug it in backwards okay now we should be able to plug in our USB port uh, cord and upload directly to the chip instead of going uploading the firmware through the Ethernet because now the Ethernet doesn't work out I, I cannot gain access to this device which is called bricking <laughs> so hopefully I can gain access to this chip again and upload some standard default software so i already have the parallax uh the propeller tool if you haven't watched my other video i show you where to download this and how to unbrick it and stuff like that so um i need to figure out where my firmware went actually i might just uh um, cut the video here and then show y'all um what i'm doing on the computer side of things because i'm gonna need to i'm gonna need the firmware so hold on open hmm i did it in the last video and now i can't remember where i put the damn firmware i labeled it firmware i thought there it is. Firmware. I think. Uh, extract here. Is it EEPROM? No, it's not. That's for, oh, uh, that's for pivot head. I <laughs> don't need that anymore. <laughs> Delete that. A lot of these icons on my desktop aren't even used. Well, let me find the firmware and I'll be back, guys. Okay, guys, so after all the discombobulating, I got the firmware file here. This uh, is a source code file, and it's um, going to be what I need to upload to this chip. So the next step is to upload your, I mean, open your propeller tool that I showed in the prior video. Press open. And... Mine's on the desktop, so I need to go here, get my propeller, and open that. And you'll see a whole bunch of machine code and just a whole bunch of sh stuff that doesn't make sense. And you don't really have to understand it to do this. Um, you could learn about all this stuff, but that's 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 a whole nother uh, video or whatever. Let's see what happens when I plug this in. Now, I don't have the power turned on to this device because I might not need it. This this programmer might actually turn on the chip itself and program it. We're going to find out right now. Excuse my desk. It is a mess. Yes, I saw a flashy light. Once it gets its COM port and everything, we got to figure out what COM port it's going to be on. And it's got little lights on the front front of it, but you won't be able to see it until it programs something. 
So, we'll let Windows muck about, but I think Windows is already done. Let's see if we can go to... I uh, need the device manager. And... See if it's in here, because I need the port that it's on. We can, try, we can just try different ports. Let's see. Low DPR. Checking. No propeller chip found. Scan COM 1, scan COM 7. Load RAM. Checking COM 7. Hmm. 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 <laughs> so. So it automatically scans the COM port. So maybe we need to power this on. And maybe that'll help us out. Hopefully I don't fry my freaking... Um, Watch him call it uh, programmer. Let me plug this in real quick. Hold on. Spark. Boom. Bam. Boom. I don't know. Maybe the chip needs to be powered for this program to work. I don't know. Didn't do very much research on this chip, so <laughs> let's see if we can do this again. Loading RAM. There we go. There we go. She's happy. She's loading. See the little lights flashing? <laughs> yeah, she's done. <laughs> i tell you what, guys. I've been waiting like two weeks for this programmer to come. And that that's as fast as it is to upload that, that file to that chip. Bam. Done. Now, I got to see if this thing works, right? I couldn't gain access to it before. So, um, I'm going to have to be back again. I'm going to have to cut the video here, but it'll be only a couple seconds for you guys. But that's pretty much as, that's how fast that is. It's a little $15 uh, programmer, chipper thingamajiggy, and, you know, a programmer, done. Simple as that. Program it, put that file on that chip, done. Who would have thunk it? So, um, the next step for me to get this controller working is to actually hook it up to the internet and stuff. So, I'm going to spare y'all the part of me hooking all the internet stuff up and getting it, try to figure out, you know, and, and default addresses. I have to pull the manual again because I can't remember uh, what the IP address is, but I can hold the program button. I can hold the program button and I did it six times. I did it six last time, so it'll blink. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, and let go. That just changed the I the standard IP address to 10.10.10.10.10, I think. But let me hook up the uh, internet and we'll figure out if I'm right or not. We'll be back. Okay, guys. So, um, all right. So we got it programmed. I, I had to bring up the manual because I couldn't remember these forced IP addresses of what they're supposed to be for. So I just did uh, the six flashes. So I forced the IP address to 192.168.1.206. But I'm on Comcast. And Comcast doesn't like, uh, it doesn't use that. It's not in the subnet mass or whatever. Well, one way of getting around this is you can go over here. You can open up your network settings. Usually I would use screen capture for this. Sorry, guys. I'm a little shaky, too. I'm holding the camera. And every time I fire up a camera, for some stupid reason, my cats start meowing. I don't know why. Just to, they know they're doing it on purpose. But anyway, so you go to uh, your thing, and you got to put your IP address to, uh, like a local IP address of 192.168.1.200. Just make up a number. Subnet, it's going to be 255. Don't worry about gateway, just hit OK. And then close. Um, 
once you've done that, I should gain access to this. So before I got the programmer, I didn't have access to this. So hopefully this will work. Let's see. Let's find out. Let's open a new tab up here. So that IP address that I forced it to was... 192.168.1.206. So let's see if that works. So we'll uh, 192.168.1.206. Please work. Fuck yes. I'm back up and running. Got it unbricked. That's how you unbrick. Hey, a sense device. 682. Now I can just change the IP address back over to. 10.10.0.0.10.0.0.206. Just like that. And then we'll come over here and we'll hit update system information. And that probably took care of that. I'm going to put this back to multicast. I don't know why that... Hey! We don't need this bull crap right now. My cats are like starting fights right now. It's crazy. They always do this when I'm filming. <laughs> don't know why. All right, so I'm gonna put this back to multicast. We don't want a test pattern. Uh, blah 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 blah. And I got seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That looks good. And I'll have to set up this stuff later. A lot of setting up to do to get my uh, lights working. And it is the twenty-first right now. As you can see, I got a lot of work to do, and um, maybe I will have that Christmas show, guys. I don't know. We're, we'll have to see. But successfully just unbricked my thing. So, to update the system information, it should hold this IP address. So, let's hope that that's the case. Because when I close this, I don't have access to it until I change back to um, regular DHCP stuff here. Let's see. Obtain, obtain. Okay. Close. So my IP address on this controller should be 10.0.0.206. So, sensedevices.com is where I got that manual from. So, it should be 10.0.0.206. Hmm. 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 Connecting. Connecting. It's not gonna do it. It loads fast. That's what I said it as. Maybe my settings are wrong or something. I don't know. I'm out of memory on my phone. Great. Hey guys. Um since my uh my uh battery or memory got full on my phone. I couldn't record like with the phone anymore. So, but um, and I can't show you. But the Sans device is here, and I I do love the fact that I just changed the IP address for the controller here, updated the system inform information just like I was doing earlier. Ran into a little snag, but it's it's all cleared up now, and this thing is. This thing is totally working. So here's a new tab. So if I type in 10.0.0.206, my controller's on the internet and I can I can access it. So that's how you unbrick a uh, Sans device. You gotta somehow get that uh, file into that computer chip, and I'll work for you. Guys, it's Jeff the Maintenance Man. Y'all have a great day. Merry Christmas. Hopefully, I will have a um, light show for you guys. I'm working on it. It just, so many things have gone wrong. This 
this week, this month, whatever, with the car breaking down, all sorts of dumb stuff, you know. All right, guys, Jeff the Maintenance Man, you have a great day, and thanks for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing.